I have my questions. Oh, and <laughs> one more thing. It's that the one, the, if you can, like, when you're etching something, if you can move a little bit there, because yeah. the lighting is better and you look better on the camera. <coughs> they, they really want it to be on top, right? Well, I'm more the shy guy, you know. I know, but if it, I just, I can tell that I can do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would like to hide behind my screen <laughs> in reality. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Star Trek. We should start, right? right, right. Yeah. So, welcome back to the last technical session of this first day. Uh, I'm Diet Mayanach. I'm chairing the session. We have six papers here. Uh, the first one is towards unified metrics for accuracy and diversity for recommender systems presented by Shadi. Oops. Hi, my name is Javier. I'm going to present this work with, uh, this joint work with uh, Philip Radinsky that we did while visiting researching in uh, Google London. So I will talk about uh, unified metric for accuracy and diversity in recommender systems. We know uh, that most of the research that is commonly done in the REXIS community tends to uh, choose an accuracy metric for evaluation. But lately, it has been demonstrated that serendipity, novelty, or diversity are critical in terms of user engagement and satisfaction. So there is this dichotomy uh, that the developers uh, have to face uh, when uh, uh, trying to optimize a new model. What we propose in this work is uh, basically uh, a new metric that considers both uh, uh, topical in terms of aspect redundancy and item and topical relevance in the formulation. Uh, our idea has roots on uh, the search result diversification tasks from information retrieval, uh, where uh, an information need Not working now. Uh, and why our information need uh, may um, may uh, show different aspects. This is a topic from uh, the diversity track in track where uh, you can uh, have you can have interest in NCL, but in, in the ships or the island that they own. Uh, we uh, have this analogy where item categories or aspects play the, play the name of the uh, the role of the nuggets in information retrieval. So. Uh, we have uh, the aspects and the item categories as uh, in this analogy. So in the very same way, a movie can be both uh, sci-fi, uh, mystery, or action. Uh, in this task in IR, uh, different metrics have been proposed in the past, such as alpha, NDTG, MRBP, EU, or RBU. So what we did was following a dual approach with uh, 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 two, two uh, sides here, an asymmetric uh, definition of a new metric, and then experimental evaluation. For that axiomatic uh, process, we defined a set of eight uh, axioms, which are desirable properties that a, a new metric should uh, uh, satisfy. I will not go in detail in, the four, in, in those eight axioms, but let's just mention them. We have the priority inside aspect axiom, uh, deepness inside aspect axiom, then the non-priority on saturated aspect, and uh, top heaviness threshold. And then we have the, uh, the complementary uh, top heaviness threshold, the uh, aspect relevant axiom, uh, the preference, m uh, the prefer more aspect uh, contribution, and the missing over no relevant item axiom. So we uh, took those eight properties that we think a good metric should, fo should uh, satisfy. And with that information and that in mind, we, def we adapted the uh, alpha and the Fiji metric to the uh, field of recommender systems. So the alpha and the Fiji metric basically accounts for uh, both uh, the uh, relevance of item and aspects over the information need of the user and how satisfied is the user at a given point in the ranking of items. So for uh, the first factor, the probability of an aspect given a user and an item, we have this estimation, which basically accounts for 
uh, zero when the aspect is not present in the item, so the item is not in a given category. And then it could be either alpha factor, uh, when there is no rating for the user in the test set, or the beta factor when there is that item uh, rating in the test set for the user. Then for the other uh, factor they are, the probability of an aspect even using the, and the items that he already saw in the ranking S, we just have the uh, discounting model of NDTG, where basically you discount the, the um, interest that the user already got satisfied by the previous uh, items in the ranking. And then the only remaining factor here is the probability of the aspect, so the category, given the user. And while in, re in retrieval you cannot estimate that, here we can estimate with the uh, past user profile, uh, basically by the maximum likelihood estimator. And then this is integrated with the ideal ranking from NDTG, and it, uh, it is the metric, the alpha, beta, NDTG metric that we propose here. So basically we evaluate how our new proposal and then the, probal, the possible adaptation of existing metrics for search result diversification, they uh, hold or not the different axioms. We just uh, know that uh, metrics from retrieval, they tend to fail on specific aspects uh, that are from the recommender assistance uh, area. And of course, the, our new metric is, is satisfies all those axioms. But we know that uh, only axiomatic analysis can lead to, let's say, um, uh, misleading uh, conclusion, so we decided to produce an um, uh, experiment with actual collaborative filtering data. For that, we use the MovieLens 20 million data set, which basically has uh, 19 categories, uh, and then we evaluate alpha and DTG, RBU, as you recall, SRR, MBRP, and EU. For uh, doing the experimentation, we define an ideal ordinary, which details are in the paper, which basically ranks the uh, items on the test set for the user uh, by jointly optimizing relevance and diversity. And with that ideal ordering, we produce different perturbations. So we are able to present uh, gradually worse uh, uh, item rankings to the user by uh, uh, three different perturbation approach. The first one is swapping items bottom to top of, on that ideal ordering. So putting on the top less relevant items. Uh, the second is swapping items uh, from redundant aspects, so it's introducing redundancy in category terms on the top, and the third one is uh, swapping uh, aspects uh, in the ranking, so that means put on the top uh, less relevant aspects for the user. So with that ideal order in those gradual perturbations, we can compute the Kendall-Tau correlation of uh, uh, produced given the different metrics. And that's what we did in the first experiment, uh, for that, we see that in the first perturbation approach, or, uh, uh, most of the metrics, they are able to map the exact rank, uh, order of rankings that we, uh, uh, that we, we have uh, given the perturbations. But the S version of recall and reciprocal rank, that they are not uh, able to compute that because they don't consider um, that dimension in the formulation. For the second one, we see now how both expected utility and RVU uh, they also fail on that. Only uh, alpha, NDTG, and MBRP are able to uh, keep the good behavior. And then in the third one, when we uh, swap uh, aspects on the ranking, that means uh, putting less relevant aspects on the top, the MBRP also fails to uh, behave uh, 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 quite well. So for this first experiment, we see how alpha, beta, and DTG is the uh, only one that keeps a good behavior in three different scenarios. And then the second experiment is similar, but instead of uh, evaluating uh, Kendall-Tau correlation, we evaluate the discriminative power. As you may know, discriminative power is an important uh, aspect for a metric, given the fact uh, that it should spot a statistical uh, significant difference uh, easily to the researchers. So basically, we plot the, the different discriminative power for uh, the metrics here uh, under the three very same scenarios I commented before. We see in the first perturbation items spot at the top uh, how the S versions of recall and RR again, the, w the ones performing worse. When swapping here to the second scenario, we see how expected utility starts to behave uh, a little worse. The other metrics keep a good behavior. But it's in the third case, so swapping uh, uh, less relevant aspects to the top where uh, the thing changed dramatically. So here in this, uh, in this um, 
uh, in this scenario, most of the metrics behave chaotically, and they go up and down and up and down. And only our proposal of alpha, beta, and DPG is the one that is able uh, to increase uh, gradually and monotonically uh, the discriminative power that is the best uh, behavior possible. Uh, and then we produce a third experimentation, which, is, uh, which tries to evaluate the robustness to incompleteness of uh, a given metric. And that's uh, basically uh, tackling with the missing rating effect of offline evaluation. We see here how our metric, even removing 90% of the ratings in the test set for the user, it almost is able almost of uh, producing the very same ranking of systems. So it achieves a, a very strong correlation over all dot uh, J. Uh, so just for concluding, we, what we did, uh, did here was to propose some adaptation of existing metrics from uh, uh, retrieval based on uh, NDPG. We show how uh, they behave and uh, the problems that they have both um, axiomatically and, uh, experiment and with experimental data. Uh, and we define it as a set of assumptions that any good metric should follow. We show how our proposal does. Uh, and we have also analyzed the data with uh, the metrics with actual data. As future uh, work, we want to explore uh, other discounting approaches and how to, uh, they correlate with actual behavior of users in online settings. And we also want to study the capacity of the alpha and beta uh, and beta uh, factors to uh, uh, cope with different uh, scenarios and rating patterns. And uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have time for a few questions, so please come up to the microphone. We have no online questions yet. One first question. Hello, thank you for your talk. Uh, there was no alpha and DCG in your experiments, uh, but uh, could you please elaborate on uh, what are the main difference of alpha, beta, and DCG to alpha and DCG? So uh, alpha, beta, and DCG is both adaptation of alpha and DCG to the uh, Rexis problem, and then uh, you have an additional factor that uh, helps you to deal with the missing rating effect. So when you, in, if you recall the three branches probability there, uh, the estimations are different. So here you have three scenarios. Uh, when adapting the alpha and DPG to the Rexis problem, you will not have the missing rating uh, case. That's the main difference. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There's, there's one more question online from Alba. How extendable is the approach to other definitions of topical diversity? OK, so this is. Uh, this is designed in terms of you have there an aspect that will be a category but can be any, anything else. So let's say there are facets from products. They say that they are, they are different types of products. You just have to uh, consider in the formulation what the, uh, uh, the A, the aspects are. So it sh should be easily uh, adapted and extended. OK, more questions from the audience, maybe? Online? More questions, many questions, so we can do one or the other. So one question is, did you try making a loss that optimizes or approximately optimizes this metric? So uh, again, please. Uh, did you try defining a loss to, to optimize this metric? So we are not, I mean, you could do that, but we are not optimizing the metric at all. I guess that he, mean, he or she means the ideal ordering, or it should be something like that. So we produce an ideal ordering greedily by uh, uh, ranking the um, items in the test uh, split of the user. And then you, they, for that, yeah, you should pull, train something. But you have to decide on, and then you are by, your metric will be biased to that loss that yeah. you define. OK. I do have a question. So the one assumption seems to be that you have a static diversity level that, that's fits all, right? But yeah. diversity needs might be very context specific or user specific. Sure. How would that fit into your framework? So this is like we are tackling the first effort on offline evaluation where we don't have like the classical problem of quality filtering evaluation. You don't have user sessions, you don't have users uh, feed with feedback to the system. So this is quite simple scenario. It's the first step. 
if you want to generalize taking account of past behavior in the very same session or a sequence of actions by the user, then probably you will have to adapt your metric to uh, cope with such complex scenarios. Okay. Just to start, I have one more question. Uh, have you thought of studying this, the metric with, with real users? How would such a study look like to validate that your, your trade-off metric uh, reflects user quality perceptions? Yeah, so it's something similar what, to what uh, happened in IR in retrieval. You have a very strong uh, model, a discounting model of NDTG. You know that depending on the metric, the discounting model should be adapted. So it's not the same level of boring that the user gets in one uh, domain or, or other domain when going down in the ranking. Uh, we, have, we have adapted that very formal discounting model, but it should be tested with the specific domains where, you know, maybe in some domain in Netflix, you, you are boring after five topics of the same, uh, um, after, after some, the five items of the same topic, then, but then in Amazon, looking for products is the totally different. So you have to adapt the discounting model to, to the scenario, to the domain. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Again. We can move to our second, uh, the second paper of this session, which is.